there's two things that solve every problem. Money and explosives. <laughs> I've got an idea! So you've got an idea for a digital product that you want to build. It's exciting, isn't it? You're probably buzzing with thoughts about its features, its design, and how it's going to revolutionize the market. And we give it back to you. But wait, what if no one wants it? How do you know people will find it useful? How can you validate the idea without wasting too much of your resources? That is where the concept of the minimum viable product, or MVP, comes into play. So what is an MVP? According to Eric Ries, the author of The Lean Startup, it is the minimum viable product is that version of a new product which allows a team to collect the maximum amount of validated learning about customers with the least effort. You speak English? Or put short, it is the simplest version of your product that can be released to the public. It's not a bare bones prototype, but rather a functional product with just enough features to satisfy your early adopters and provide valuable feedback for future development. But before we continue, I want to announce that we have created an agency that will help to bring your MVP to life on the web. We specialize in design, development, and deploying your web application. If this interests you, then visit us at rhythmic.studio and schedule a free call with us today. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. But why would you want an MVP? Think of it as the appetizer before a gourmet meal. It's a tiny but tasty bite that tells you if you're in for a feast or if you should have ordered a pizza instead. With an MVP, you get the same sort of benefits and much more. The first of which is risk reduction. Going all in on a fully fledged product without testing it is like skydiving without checking if you have a parachute. An MVP, however, lets you test your concept with minimal resources. It's about making smart calculated moves in the uncertain world of product development. The second benefit is market validation. It's like asking, hey, does anyone actually want this super cool thing that I made? An MVP helps you to understand if there's real demand for your product. By launching a basic version, you get to see how your target market reacts. The third benefit is cost effectiveness. Building an MVP is significantly less expensive, both time-wise and financially, than developing a full-scale product. This approach conserves your resources, which is especially vital for startups or business with limited budgets. Next, we have faster time to market. Speed is key, and as much as I love Aesop, the hare beats the rabbit in this game. With an MVP, you can get to market quicker. This speed allows you to stay ahead of competitors and adapt rapidly to market changes or trends. A great example of this is when Spotify started. Instead of trying to launch a full featured product covering every potential user need and music market, they focused on a very basic yet functional version of their service. The initial version primarily offered streaming music with a simple user interface, but it didn't include many of the features that we see today, like podcast streaming, complex algorithms for music recommendations, or integration with social media platforms. By launching this MVP version, Spotify was able to enter the market quickly and gain a large chunk of it. Then there's focus development. An MVP forces you to concentrate on the core value of your product. This focus ensures that the most essential features are developed well, enhancing overall product quality. And finally, probably the most important one, user feedback and engagement. Early adopters can provide invaluable feedback. This interaction helps in shaping the future development of the product based on actual user needs and preferences, not just the assumptions that you make up in your head. It's all in my head. Using the feedback, you can then go and iterate on your products and also build a community of people that have shown interest. Okay, now we understand why we need an MVP and the benefits that come from having one. But what makes a good one? Your MVP should be solving a problem. If it is a large problem, then as any good problem solver, you need to break it up into smaller problems and attack a couple of them. For example, back when Airbnb started, they tried to solve the problem for those that could not find a place to stay when attending a conference. Here are five characteristics your MVP should embody. Number one, sufficient value. Your MVP should provide enough value to attract early adopters. It needs to solve a real problem or fulfill a genuine need, even in its simplest form. Think of it as a proof of concept that people can use to benefit from. Number two, core features only. Focus on the core features that address the primary needs of your target audience. Avoid the temptation to add more features than necessary. This keeps the development faster and the user experience more focused. It's like packing for a weekend trip. Take only what you need. Number three, clear objectives. So let me be clear. Be clear about what you want to achieve with your MVP. Is it validating a product idea, impressing investors, or understanding user behavior? 
Your MVP should be built with these objectives in mind. Number four, measurable results. Incorporate ways to measure user engagement and feedback, whether it's through analytics, surveys, or direct user feedback channels. Having measurable results helps in making informed decisions moving forward. And finally, number five, representative user experience. While simplified, the MVP should still offer a user experience that is representative of what you envisioned for the full product. It should give users a taste of the product's look, feel, and basic functionality. Let's now consider a hypothetical example. Imagine a startup developing a language learning app called Not Duolingo. Their MVP might focus solely on the most basic and unique feature, interactive conversational practice with AI. They would avoid adding extras like gamification or advanced grammar lessons initially. Their MVP would still need to be engaging, user-friendly, and provide real value in language learning. Okay, now we understand the characteristics of what makes a good MVP. But what does the development process look like? The development of an MVP is not just about building a product. It's about learning, adapting, and finding the most efficient path to solve a problem. Here is a seven stage process of developing an MVP. Stage one, ideation and conceptualization. This is where it all starts. You brainstorm and refine your idea. What problem are you solving? Who is your target audience? This phase is about defining your vision and setting clear goals for what your MVP will achieve. Stage two, market research. Before you start building anything, you need to understand the market. Who are your competitors? What do users really need and want? This research will help ensure that your MVP is not just a great idea, but one that has real world demand. Stage three, defining core features. Once you have a solid understanding of your market and audience, identify the core features that your MVP will include. Remember the goal is to create the simplest version of your product that still delivers value. Stage four, design and prototyping. Design a basic prototype of your MVP. This can be as simple as sketches on paper or as complex as a digital prototype. The key here is to visualize how your MVP will work and what the user experience will be like. It's to be a simple, clear message. Stage five, build the MVP. Now it's time to turn your prototype into a real functional product. This step involves actual development work, coding, testing, and deploying the MVP. Remember to keep it simple. Avoid the temptation to add more features at this stage. Stage six, gathering initial feedback. Once your MVP is live, gather feedback from early users. The feedback is crucial as it will guide the future development and improvement of your product. Are your users finding value in your MVP? What improvements are they suggesting? And for the final stage, iterating and improving. Based on the feedback, iterate on your MVP. This might mean adding new features, tweaking existing ones, or even pivoting your approach entirely. This is an ongoing process as your MVP evolves into a fully fledged product. Developing an MVP is a nuanced process filled with temptations of adding features that feel good. Therefore, it is easy to stray off course. Understanding these common mistakes and misconceptions can help steer your project in the right direction. The first of these mistakes is overcomplicating the MVP. One of the most frequent missteps is packing too many features into the MVP. Remember, minimum is key in MVP. It's about bare essentials needed to test your hypothesis, not about delivering a feature-rich product. Google Wave was an ambitious project aiming to revolutionize online communication, combining email, instant messaging, and collaboration. However, its MVP was too complex and feature rich, overwhelming users who struggled to understand its purpose and its use effectively. The next misconception is underestimating quality. While an MVP should be minimal, it shouldn't be subpar. A common misconception is that MVPs can compromise on quality. In reality, users expect basic levels of functionality and reliability even from an MVP. The initial launch of healthcare.gov, the US health insurance exchange website, is an example where the MVP was not adequately tested for performance and scalability, leading to numerous glitches and performance issues at launch. The third misconception is ignoring user feedback. The purpose of an MVP is not just to get a product out quickly, but to learn from early users. Ignoring user feedback defeats its purpose and can lead your product development astray. We all remember when Microsoft decided to depart Windows 8 from previous versions with a new interface aimed at touchscreen devices. What is that? Huh? 
However, Microsoft initially ignored user feedback about the lack of traditional start menu, leading to dissatisfaction among users. The fourth misconception is neglecting market research. Skipping through market research before developing an MVP can lead to a product that doesn't resonate with the target audience. Understanding the market is crucial for defining the right features and positioning your MVP for success. Amazon's Fire Phone is an example where insufficient market research led to a product that didn't meet market needs. The phone featured unique technologies like 3D visuals, but it failed to appeal to consumers who were satisfied with existing smartphones, leading to its discontinuation. And the final mistake is failing to iterate based on feedback. Remember, the MVP is just the start. Not iterating based on feedback is a common pitfall and in time your audience will forget you ever existed. The MVP process involves continuous refinement and evolution of the product based on what you learn from your early users. The perfect example of this is with Quibi, which I think the whole internet roasted when it was announced. Quibi intended to become a short form streaming platform and it struggled partly because it didn't iterate its offering based on early user feedback. The platform was criticized for its mobile only approach and lack of content variety, issues that were just swept under the rug. So folks, that brings us to the end of what it takes to build an MVP. The key takeaway here is that it is the simplest version of your product that can be released to the public. And you have to be ready to take on feedback given back from the audience. If you don't, then you'll find yourself building something that no one wants. And if you're ready to build an MVP, we have created an agency that will help to bring your MVP to life on the web. We specialize in design, development, and deploying your web application. If this interests you, then visit us at rhythmic.studio and schedule a free call with us today.